Mr. Gleason, thank you very much. And um, I must say, I'm going to disappoint you a little bit uh, because I will need to address Honorable Sam George just very briefly. Um, and I'm glad um, MP Bell has touched on that. There is an appropriate way to deal with people in a debate. And there is an inappropriate way to deal with people in a debate. And I understand your passion to defend what is essentially a, your baby. I understand completely. But what you do not do and what we're not going to do is disrespect my office as a traditional ruler and disrespect other panelists, which is exactly what you have done. And I have to say, I have a lot of respect for you, but I am very disappointed in your attitude tonight. Having said that, let's focus on the bill. I reiterate, um, it, I quoted uh, section 17 and 18 in particular. In all this conversation, there is the blurred lines. In fact, I said um, the lines have not been blurred. It has been obliterated um, between harm to a person and choice. The bill seeks to expand criminality to encompass a wide section of people. And it also seeks to prohibit a section of the population from adopting on the basis and on the assumption that by being LGBTQ automatically, they would cause harm to that child. So it says we're protecting the children. And therefore, we're asking the courts to prohibit these people from adoption. And I want to dwell on that. Um, um, and then I'll, I'll go back to the cultural aspect before I, I round up. Now, what you must do, what most countries do when people go to adopt is to vet the individuals concerned. Are these people criminals? Are they in, by criminal, I don't mean within the context of Ghanaian law. Uh, and again, we've all established that this is a colonial law. The 1960 uh, Criminal Offences Act, Section 104, um, is, it is uh, a colonial law and you may do well to read up on it properly. What most countries do is to vet individuals and to identify whether that child is um, potentially going to be harmed by that, that individual based on the people's history. There are people in our society who are upstanding citizens, law-abiding citizens, people who are res highly respected human beings who may identify as LGBTQ, who may want to see those children who I ad advocate for, walking in the streets and walking to school without shoes. Those children who may have lost parents, those children who don't have guardians, those children who are being abused by heterosexual men and women. They may want to adopt them and give them a better life. And you're saying these upstanding citizens must be criminalized to the point of prohibiting them from giving a child a fair chance in life simply because you have an aversion to the way they've chosen to lead, lead their life. An aversion to something, um, something offending your sensibilities does not automatically make it criminal. If, and, and, and when you say, when you say, um, I have to tell you, uh, shouting about something loud enough does not make it true. Shouting about something loud enough does not make it true. So when you shout, um, you can shout as much as possible, but common sense tells me that until somebody has actually caused harm or until an act is going to cause harm to another person, you cannot turn around and say it is criminal. So the law that we have at the moment, if I had my way, that will change. If I had my way, that will change. And it will change to see humans as either bad people or good people. Because I'm going to repeat the heterosexual individual is equally as capable of causing harm to another person as uh, an LGBTQ person. And I, for one, have seen many instances of heterosexuals doing this. 
And before you challenge me on the uh, whether my cultural identity, I want to educate you. And being a lawmaker, you should understand this. I am a very proud queen, an African queen and a Ghanaian queen. And I hold my culture very, very dear. Now, here's the thing about a gazette. It is an administrative instrument. A gazette does not a king or a queen make. So if you think you, and, and it's a mark of a very poor debater who resorts to inferences and insults when they have nothing coherent to offer. And I am disappointed because I've always seen you as a learned person. So if you sought to embarrass me by inferring that I am probably not uh, gazetted because I have challenged the National House of Chiefs. You are absolutely wrong. And I will say it again, a gazette does not a king or a queen make. It is merely an, an, an administrative instrument for order and for politicians to be able to know who to go to and who not to go to. Finally, I do belong to the traditional institution. I am a proud queen or queen mother. I make no bones about it, but what I do have is a conscience and I will not, I'd rather be unpopular than sit here, look into my conscience and say, it is okay to ostracize a human being merely for making a choice about how they enjoy their sexual uh, uh, pleasure. And I dare say that this bill that you're proposing to expand may come back to haunt all of us because God forbid I choose or anybody chooses in a heterosexual relationship as I have enunciated earlier to enjoy sexual ple pleasure in a way that you and other people consider unnatural. They would be criminals. God forbid someone should say, let's look at this from a human perspective. They become automatically a promoter of LGBTQ rights and an ally of LGBT. Therefore, they're criminals. That makes me a traditional ruler sitting here talking today uh, a, a, a criminal. Finally, I hold my tradition very dear. When I go to Queen Elizabeth's court, mm -hmm. I give her respect. Mm -hmm. When you see your traditional representative and you disrespect them in public, it says a lot about you and about what you're uh, uh, promoting your culture, your tradition as. And I feel very disrespected and therefore I'm very disappointed in you. Emmanuel. Put me back on. Thank you. Thank you. Zoom, zoom.